Hello future people, welcome to Getting Tabled. I'm Jason the Bruce, and today we're checking out the Wolf Bristle Brushes. Yes, that's as hard to say as you think it is. From Chronicle RPG. This has been a long time coming. I backed this on Kickstarter. We talked about this on the podcast at least 12 months ago. Um, most people should have received these at least six months ago. Mine actually came in last week. Um, you know, people that are not involved in the Kickstarter may be going, well, why are you going into this story? The reason is myself and quite a large number of other people didn't receive these initially. Uh, Chronicle RPG had organized for a third party to actually post these on their behalf, which is not uncommon with Kickstarter. It actually happens with quite a lot of people. I'm receiving a board game next week that's being done the same way. But for... I don't know why, but the company that was dealing with them sent out shipping notifications and never actually posted any of the parcels. Now, there was a not small amount of people that were making complaints on the Kickstarter, and it was at least a couple of weeks before Chronicle RPG actually realized that this had happened. Um, it's something that can... I mean, complaints about things not arriving or being slow is not unusual on Kickstarter. There are some people that jump on that bandwagon a little earlier than they should, but this turned out to be a legitimate problem. One that they have fixed. Um, the reason I'm wording it this way is but I was one of those people. I was one of the people that was very upset. I am one of those people that reached out to them, just as myself. I mean, they don't know who I am. It's not like I have a huge following or anything. Um, and just let them know, look, these are available at retail. Why, why have I not received them? Like, legit, legitimately, I could have purchased these at a store about three months ago if I wanted to. That's how late these were for a large percentage of that Kickstarter. Now, Chronicle RPG say that they weren't aware that this had become a problem. Um, and I have no reason not to believe them. Like, from the moment that I made the complaint um, to them acknowledging it, and then I received this about a month and a half, two months later. That's fairly much what you would expect if the story was legitimate. I have no reason to believe that it's not. Um, I mean, if they were just lying to cover their tracks, then really all the bad press is out there at that point. They could have just kept on, kept on going. Um, I mean, obviously companies try to do that all the time. Some of them get away with it. Some of them don't. Uh, but mine's actually arrived. Uh, packaging wise, it looks very nice and pretty. The reason I'm filming this now, these actually arrived last week and I haven't had the chance to actually look at them because I've been busy with other things. And I'm going to a painting thing with some friends this afternoon and I want that to be the start of me using these exclusively for the next week. So this is a video that you won't see for at least a week and a half after I've started filming this today. Um, so this is 10 wolf bristle brushes. That's really difficult to say. Uh, with a rosewood tone handle. My assumption is that it's a cheaper wood and that it's been stained the rosewood color because that's why it says tone. That's an assumption on my behalf, though. I don't actually know that for a fact. It does have brass ferrules, so that's interesting. Uh, housed in a velvet pouch. It has sizes triple zero to seven. Uh, this pack is perfect for any kind of grey miniature prey. Here's the thing. I've never seen a wolf bristle brush before. At all. I've, I've used a lot of sable brushes. That They are obviously the most common ones when it comes to your high, class, your, your high quality ones. Uh, and I've used quite a few synthetic brushes. I'm not a big fan of synthetic brushes. I'm not saying don't use them. Uh, they have a very big place in the hobby and you should own some of them. Um, it's just that if I have the choice between a sable brush and a synthetic brush, I will never pick up the synthetic brush. Um, unless it's for specific purposes that they are designed for. Um, if you want me to talk about that at another point, let me know. 
But otherwise, let's get down and have a look at this. So, first things first. For the packaging, I actually really love this artwork. It's really, really pretty. Uh, this is card. It looks like it does seem to have some plastic inside of this. It is quite rigid. Uh, but we will see as we get into it. The top has the brush, so if this is sitting on a shelf, it would probably be sitting out like that would be my assumption. Depends on the store. This is probably a little bit too large for most stores' shelvings. And then there's some usual stuff on the bottom. On the back, this is literally what I was reading a moment ago. And the website. These guys are based in Australia, by the way. So I don't know what their international shipping is like, but it is worth noting. So, quite firm. This plasticky smell, which is probably coming from in here. Here's our brushes. This is quite hard to get out of the tube. So, when you're opening this, make sure to look inside because you could very easily send that away uh, without looking. Um, so... Generally speaking, these are they're advising them to dry with the tips up. Load your brush halfway. Uh, just for the record, that is way more than halfway. But anyway, uh, the reason for this, for those that are not aware, because if, you, if you're a new painter, if you have this all the way up to the metal part, which is called the ferrule, you'll end up getting paint inside of this, and that will cause your brush to end up going like this instead of staying nice and pointy. Uh, clean with cold water. Don't leave them down. Be gentle. Dried paint can cause fraying because it'll wear everything out. So, pouches wise, this is actually a double drawstring, so it's not one of these ones where you cinch it down. It's one that you could, in theory, tie in knots if you would like to. That's probably what I would recommend depending on how often you travel and so forth. These are very pretty. We have a zero here, which is a gammer. Garmer. Two, which is Amarok. This, generally speaking, it is worth noting uh, that the numbers used to describe brushes are not universal. But generally, with most brushes, I tend to go somewhere between a 1 and a 2. Uh, that's the 0, just for the record. This is probably what most people tend to stick with. I prefer a larger brush, personally, as long as it's got a nice pointy tip. Uh, double 0 is frecky or freckle. The tips on these are not going to show up on camera very well. I... I could sit here trying to fight the camera the entire time. It's just not going to show up very well, unfortunately. That's Jerry, which is the triple zero. O'Donnell is the number three. It's actually quite nice. I like that. Nice and sharp. Ferhago. That's a one. Wep wa wep. I want to say, I know I'm going to be getting all of these pronunciations wrong. Um, if you know how to pronounce them properly, then feel free to comment with what the correction is. Fenrir is the big one. I don't know where you would ever use this in miniature painting. Obviously, with regular painting, you probably would. Um, in um, terrain painting, perhaps. But I don't know where you would ever use a brush that large. In a regular miniature. I have one I have one of the freckies where the thing has actually come off inside the packaging. Thankfully there's been no damage to the tip here. That would have been a genuine concern.
So this is everything that I've received. I have three triple zeros. I have three double zeros. I have three zeros. I have three ones. I have three twos. I have two threes and two sevens. I so in the retail version of the package, you will end up receiving one size seven, one size three, two size twos, two size ones, two size zeros. One size two zero and one size three zero. So that's your retail package. As a bonus, I also received that and all of the others that you've also seen. First impressions is hard to say too much. Handle wise, I quite like them because they are a little larger. Um, all of the handles are very similar. If you're someone that's has issues with gripping small items or you're someone that has an issue with uh, your grip or arthritis or something like that already I can see some benefits here because this is slightly bigger uh, that's not to say that it's going to be universal for everyone I know that there are people out there that have issues with this um, I don't specifically but just to give you an idea this is a fairly standard size paintbrush like it's quite significantly bigger uh, this is also a fairly standard size looking paintbrush. So if you're someone that struggles with gripping smaller items, these may actually be very helpful for you. So it's been about a week and a half since I've last spoken to you. I decided to give it a little longer just because I had a few interruptions during the week and I didn't get as much painting done as I intended. Uh, but I do have some decent feedback on this stuff. Uh, before I go to the feedback, there's one thing I didn't say earlier on in the video that I think is a very important thing for me to say now. When it comes to painting brushes, when it comes to different brands and how they work, generally speaking, there is no perfect paintbrush. It's a matter of personal preference. Now, this isn't something that's often said by reviewers when they're reviewing paintbrushes, but in the case of this, I feel it's very important because any criticisms I have for this, honestly, I have no criticisms about the quality of the brushes at all. The criticisms that I have are things that personally I don't enjoy in a paintbrush. Um, I'm just going to use the 7 as an example just because it's the biggest and probably the easiest to show on camera. Generally speaking, these are holding their point really, really nicely. Like That's actually still really sharp. Um, the thing I have found, when you're painting with them, when they start curling, when you're using them, they tend to hold that shape. And I don't know how well this is showing on camera. But where a sable hairbrush will bounce back, this just kind of goes wherever you put it. I can't say I enjoy that. I have a feeling that for people that... um enjoy doing freehand that may actually be something that you find very useful it's kind of like freehanding is not something i do a lot of because i don't really have like a drawing skill uh but i i find that a little frustrating because i at this point i find it something that's kind of hard to get used to because all other brushes i've used up until now have worked very differently um where sable hair brushes like they generally tend to give you a bit of resistance this just does whatever you want it to do. Uh, but in saying that, honestly, I have a lot of positive things to say about these brushes. Um, I used this more than anything else because I was largely, on that Saturday, I did a lot of base coating. Not as much as I wanted to, honestly. We spent more time talking than we did anything else. Uh, but I quite deliberately treated this quite poorly. Um because I was kind of curious how it would hold up. Plus, I have the spare. So if I kind of ruined one for the review, which I haven't, then it wouldn't have mattered so much. But this has held up. I, I did dry brushing with this and everything. I was not kind to this. 
And it's held up really, really, really nicely. Um, honestly, these paintbrushes have turned out really, really good. Uh, like I said, there's some personal things that I don't personally appreciate. Like that, at this stage, annoys the hell out of me. But it is something that I'm sure I could get used to over time. Um, it definitely shows me that for my personal preference, I definitely prefer sable brushes. These guys do sell sable hair brushes. Um, it's just that's not the ones that I had. Because I saw the wolf ones and I'm like, I've never used wolf fur before. I'm going to try them out. And I did. Um, so these are something that I will definitely add to my repertoire. They're probably not going to become my main brush. Uh, but honestly, as far as quality is concerned, these are holding up really nicely. Um, I would definitely recommend them. I genuinely would. You've made it through to the end of another video. Your next mission is to hit subscribe and comment down below. If you'd like to reach out to the team, consider doing that, getting tabled at gmail.com. Consider subscribing to our Patreon. For only $2 a month, you get early access to almost every single video that we do. Our most active social media is facebook.com slash getting tabled. It's where you'll find everything first. There's also a Discord. There's an invite on screen right now. If you type that in, it'll give you instant access. If you're on Twitter or Instagram, you can find us at getting tabled. It's not the most active, but it's something we're trying to use more all the time. Come and check out Jason the Bruce at Twitch. He does both video game and hobby content. And of course, without question, play more games. Of the wolf bristle brussels, the wolf bristle brussels, I've never tried wolf bristle brussels. The wolf bristle brussels, uh, we have wolf bristle brushes, and yes, that was as hard to say as you think it was.